Welcome to the Anime History of the Week for the week ending September 6, 2019. Going all the way back to 1972, we have the founding of Studio Sunrise. This is an interesting one. Uh, we don't know the exact date, actually. It kind of depends on who you ask. Um, but uh, Sunrise was actually founded by a group of animators that had uh, worked at uh, for... Um, um, worked over in other studios and were kind of frustrated by how autocratic a lot of those other studios were, where there was one person who came up with all the ideas and kind of directed everyone else and kind of told everyone exactly what to do. Um, and in addition, there were a lot of problems at the time with, um, uh, with the prevailing mecha anime uh, and this sort of rise of mecha anime. And they said, let's basically specialize in animating mecha but also be a studio where we can all work together and that our, our shows are all done as a group with you know sort of um, group dynamics and, and different people allowed to offer their voice and their ideas. And as a result, if you watch a Sunrise series, uh, in the, the planning or concept section of the credits, they will always list Hajime Yatate, which is a, a little nickname they have, which basically means all of us. So Hajime Yatate is the, the moniker for the, the fact that everyone in the studio uh, gets involved in planning and helping out with these shows. Obviously, maybe not everyone all in one meeting, but you get the idea, which is pretty darn cool. Um, also this uh, week, not as happy of a thing. Uh, September 1st, 1923 was the Great Kanto Earthquake. This was a massive earthquake that um, killed hundreds of thousands of people, uh, destroyed massive amounts of property. Um, and was responsible for a number of things. Um, uh, it was kind of the death knell for traditional Japanese clothing um, uh, in Japan for safety reasons. A lot of people, because they were wearing kimono, a lot of like women and children uh, could not you know, escape the Great Kanto Earthquake and the, the dangers that were happening and fires and so forth because of those restrictive clothing. So uh, you, saw, you, saw, you saw a big sea change in the amount of Western clothing post the Great Kanto Earthquake. Um, also as a result, uh, ever since then, September 1st has become Disaster Preparedness Day in Japan, where people make sure that all of their uh, uh, disaster preparedness is up to go. They have a bug out bag or what have you. Uh, and a lot of the, like, the fire departments and such hold drills on this day and invite the public in to go through various emergency preparedness uh, procedures. So, uh, you know, the good news in that sense is that it has resulted in a society that is very much prepared for when those disasters strike. Uh, moving on to happier uh, history, September 4th, 1963, we got Senin Burako, which I'm sure you've never heard of. Uh, I didn't hear of it until I started digging into anime history. This was the first late night anime. It aired around midnight in September of 1963. Um, Astro Boy um, was um, it just aired this year, so uh, yeah, it was it was a little you know. Um, it was still early in, the, in the, the, the era of anime, and this is sort of a risque manga adapted into anime. It's about uh, two monks in a monastery, of which the younger one is uh, uh, rather amorous with three sisters nearby, uh, sort of pursuing the love of these various three sisters, much to the annoyance of the head monk. So, um, you know, sort of a, a, a romantic comedy, basically, but uh, aired, you know... Uh, late nights in, in Japan and really started the whole late night thing way back in the early 60s. Can you imagine that? So late night anime has been around for, for quite a long time. So anyway, that is the history of the week. And I hope you've enjoyed watching. Thanks for watching.